Good evening, saints of God, and praise the Lord. Happy, happy Mother's Day to each and every one uh, that may have joined us um, by the radio or as a web viewer. I want to welcome you to the Cannon uh, University Ministry, where Dr. Conception Mungia will be teaching and preaching today uh, a tremendous and a very, very blessed lesson, uh, praise God, an awesome, awesome message, a Mother's Day message, praise God. And so I pray that you brought your listening ears. I pray that you brought your heart to receive what thus says the Lord on this evening. I want to welcome you again. Praise God. This is your radio announcer, Mother Smith. Praise God. And we want to just welcome you here, uh, saints of God. I hope that all of you have had a blessed Mother's Day. And for those that are new mothers, I pray that you're going to have an even better day because today is going to be a prosperous day because Dr. Conception, praise God, I know he's going to nail home with a powerful uh, message on this evening. So again, I pray that you have brought your listening ears and I pray that you've brought your heart to receive what thus says the Lord. Amen. And so the number here for those that would like to share the word with someone and invite someone to every Sunday evening at 3 o'clock p.m., the number here is 515-604-9956. The access code here is 375234. If you would like to email Dr. Conception, please do. The, num- the email here is canonuniversity at gmail.com. He also is running a theologic class for those those that may be interested, praise God, and we've had so many to being interested, and yes, the class is free, yes, it's free, praise God, and so you will receive a certificate at the end of the course, praise God, and uh, he will uh, provide you with all the literature and material that's needed, and it is online, and so it is, again, it's free, and so if you would like to be a participant in that class, which will begin sometime next week, uh, the Lord says the same, please do email uh, Dr. Conception at that email address, and so uh, we just want to just thank you all that have tuned in. Uh, by the radio, uh, as a uh, radio listener, praise God, or by the phone, we welcome you here at the Cannon University uh, Ministry, praise God. And so your host today will be Dr. Conception Mangia, uh teaching and preaching a powerful Mother's Day message. Amen. So welcome. But we will be going today in the book of Job uh, to deal with a passage that is going to pertain to mothers. And, uh, of course, on the outset, let me say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are listening. And uh, none of us would be here unless we had a mama. Mm -hmm. So thank God for all the mothers, uh, and my mother especially, for birthing me some 35-plus years ago. And very grateful, uh, of course, that the Lord has set up for days like this for people to commemorate uh, our family members and our our relatives. So especially those, of course, who have given us uh, life. Uh, that we were inside of their womb almost 10 months, and they were eating all that good uh, ice cream and pickles and, and, and the potato <laughs> chips and this and that to make us. So I'm no. grateful that when I was born, I didn't have a birthmark, although, however, I got a lot of moles on me. So I know my mother must have loved chocolate chip cookies because all my kids love chocolate chip cookies today. But uh, anyway, so very Amen. grateful in the name of Jesus for his hand. And um, I want to make today's message very personal and practical. I've been in ministry now going on almost over 20 years, rather, and have been in the church seeing the ins and outs of, uh, of what is in man, what's in, you know, uh, what, 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 what is beyond the facade of what we see. I've had a chance to personally deal with parents, mothers and fathers, and uh, to counsel them. And I want to deal with the subject of uh, mothers uh, who do not know how to be mothers. And yes, it's mm. true. Uh, a lot of people have children, yeah, yeah. but they don't know how to be a mother. And that is the most unfortunate thing, uh, I believe. And it, it happens for lots of reasons. Let me first of all say it, you know, to defend some people, is that some people never really had a mama to teach them in the first place. And so they, yeah. grow, up and they grow up and have children, and then, you know, they don't teach their kids what to do. I heard one lady say that uh, I learned the way I learned and you had to learn the way you learned. Well, no, 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 that's not a mother. A mother <laughs> is to take the time and to warn her daughters or her, if you will, especially her daughters uh, about the yeah. reality of, the, of what's in the world. You know, there's a lot of doggish men out there. If the young woman is, is if you will, naive and simple-minded, 
uh, and where I'm from in L.A., they would say that the, the, the men will run game on you. Now, if the mama mm. knows about the world, why wouldn't she try to prepare and warn her daughters about the game of men, about how men play you, how they'll use you up and flatter you and ultimately try mm. to get in your pants? But, you know, a lot of mothers leave their children to, in, in a sense, fend for themselves. I have met mothers who never taught their daughters how to use sanitary napkins, God forbid. Uh, of course, they don't know how to clean themselves up or to make sure that they are uh, uh, up and up in par with hygiene. That's important, yeah. y'all. You know what I mean? And, and, and a lot yeah. of people, I don't know why it's that way. I don't know why. But a lot of mothers omit things in passing down uh, practical, everyday uh, tools to their children, especially uh, to their girls. And, uh, well, you know, we see all kinds of things on TV today. There's just so many things. Uh, just recently I heard that uh, someone uh, was cursing out their mother on, on social media. I said, what a shame. Mm -hmm. You know, when, did it, when was it okay ever for a mother to be uh, taken down to the degree that you can cuss your mama out for the mm -hmm. whole world to see? Those were things you just didn't do. Uh, and it's sad, but that's where we are in America today. And it's a sign of the time, you know, that uh, the hearts, uh, that there will be, of course, enmity, not because of the gospel, but because of just pure depravity. People would, even without Jesus, they would go on to fight each other and have wars. And it's all kind of ways throughout the years that I have preached messages like this. And if I could, I would like to incorporate several points from those pre previous messages in this message today. And uh, it's a more intimate setting today because I'm here by myself here in Riverside. And uh, I hope that you will, of course, uh, lend me your ears to convey it to you. And uh, let me just, before I begin, Mom, did you press the record button? Are we recording? Is yes, she online, sir. Mom? Yes, Pastor. Are, are we recording? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Well, we are here going to go into Job, and God is speaking to Job in Job chapter 39, looking at verses 13 uh, through 18. And God is telling Job about an animal uh, that has the lack thereof of wisdom. God did not give this animal wisdom. He didn't give this animal, if you will, no sense of what we would call the nurturing nature of a mm. mother. You know, it, it's, uh, God has by design uh, created us uh, to objectively do things that are just normal. It's just normal for a mother to want to feed her child, to hold the baby. Amazingly enough, they've done case studies that when little children are born, if they're not touched, if they're not, uh, if you will, uh, uh, embraced, that sometimes the children will begin to uh, withdraw and develop depression. Little, little babies here. And some of them, uh, I don't know how this came about, but somebody told me that even some babies died when they did not have adequate uh, you know, nurturing love around them. I don't know who did that study. I don't know how true it is, but it's interesting to me to note that, that you notice that there are people who want volunteers for babies, to, for people to come in to hold babies, just to hold the babies for a while. And babies need that nurturing. They need that love. They need that embrace. They need that warmth. They need that the feeling of comfort there. So there is an animal, as I look at the animal kingdom, I love preaching about animals. I love how Solomon uh, would look at the animal kingdom and derive ethics and look at the wisdom, if you will, of the ant and how it stores away food for hard times. Uh, there are many different animals the Lord uses in the Bible by, by which we can see and, and, and derive ethics from by contrast and comparison. And so there is one animal that the Bible mentions where God mentions himself directly uh, that God says he did not give this animal wisdom. He did not give this animal, if you will, again, that, that, that in, initiative to be nurturing, uh, to have, if you will, a mother's heart. And that animal, of course, is the ostrich, one of the ugliest birds you ever want to see. It's an <laughs> ugly rascal, okay? He's about six feet tall. They can weigh up to 300 pounds. I've heard uh, through several friends that have the money to eat him that he is very delicious. I have seen the meat up close. It's a dark meat. It looks like a turkey to the 10th power. But uh, I would not necessarily want to eat him because the way he looks or she looks at me, I would say no thank you. 
Where I live in Riverside, there is an emu farm where people actually sell and raise emus, and every now and then they bring in some, uh, uh, what do you call it, the ostrich again. Uh, they bring in the ostrich, and they kill them for the meat and, and sell them. But, no, I wouldn't want the ostrich. She doesn't look very tasty to me. Those, are, is some, those wings look of his look pretty good, but they just, I don't know, they're just too big for me to put into a frying pan, so no thank you. The ostrich, by nature or by its, in, 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 how God has designed it to carry about or to, if you will, function, is quite interesting, quite interesting. And the Bible, and I, I'm going to read a more plain version of the Bible because when I was looking through the Bible, I wanted to find a Bible that would be able to get this conveyed to everyone that's listening without, having, for, without me having to explain the King James and uh, as it regards uh, defining it and, and recapitulating it over and over again. So I'm going to be reading out of a, a, a great Bible that uh, is really, really a great translation. And um, it is a, it's a, a clear version that I think that you would be able to uh, fully grasp and, and understand. Uh, it's an apologetic study Bible. And uh, the translation here is pretty straightforward of which when I was looking at the text in the other languages, this would be the more plain for us to, at least the one I, we would have me to choose for you. So Job chapter 39, verses 13 through 18, okay? It says, the wings of the ostrich flap joyfully, but are her feathers as plumage like the storks? So it's saying here, uh, uh, the, wing, the wings of the ostrich are not beautiful. They're not as beautiful as a as a, uh, a stork or, you know, as a peacock. No. She abandons her eggs on the ground and lets them be warmed in the sand. She forgets that a foot may crush them or that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly as if they were not her own, with no fear that her labor may have been in vain. For God has deprived her of wisdom. He has not endowed her with understanding. Now, I want you to notice the strong language here of what the Bible says that this ostrich does. Let me backdrop and give you what I see, if you will, chickens. We all have seen baby chickens. If you were raised on the farm, you saw the mother chicken, the hen there, and she'd take a little baby chicks, and she would cover the little chicks, and she, you know, the, the little chicks, walk, or maybe ducks, they follow the mom everywhere they go. Those animals are loving, they are nurturing, and they are very protective of their, of their young. Even if I deal with, a, 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 as the Bible talks about, a, a, a she-bear, a, a female bear with cubs. That female bear, the worst thing you can ever do if you're in the forest up north in, in California is to mess with a bear cub because the mama will come out of nowhere and she won't stop until she didn't told, until she didn't shredded you up. She's a nightmare, okay? Those, those brown bears up north, the California bear, not the smoky bear. Now, smoky bear, he's nice. He's talking about fire. But this one right here will really put you on fire. That, that, that she bear will hurt you if you mess with her babies. Likewise, uh, uh, a lion, it's a lioness. If you mess with the lioness's baby, you're in trouble, okay? But when it comes to the ostrich, we find here words that are very strong. Um, again, in verse 15, it says, she forgets that a foot may crush them, the eggs, her babies. These are babies that have not been, if you will, born. They're in the egg. They're being, of course, uh, uh, you know, they're in there incubating inside of the egg there. And when I was researching, and I have been wanting to talk about this for about 10 years, so this is something I've really am excited to deliver to you all today because uh, I have wanted to preach about ostriches for, yeah, again, 10 years. Um, when I was researching this some time ago, I found that what the ostrich does is that the male ostrich, he actually builds the nest. And... Well, the female ostrich just comes to lay the egg there, in the wide open, as the scripture tells us, that it could be crushed, it could be stolen away, the eggs could be uh, devoured by other uh, predators, 
And uh, lo and behold, you can find multiple eggs by different parents all in one, if you will, nest because other female ostriches will come along and kick the eggs that were there out the way and drop another egg there. Crazy, isn't it? And, um, you know, ostriches, uh, by definition here, the female ostrich seems to be heartless. It seems not to care for the young. As the scripture says here, she treats her young harshly as if they were not her own. This is some powerful language. I hope that you all are listening. It's amazing. I know a lot of mothers today that are not mothers. They're ostriches. They're ostriches because they treat their kids as though they're not their own kids. They have no love for their kids. They have no concern for their kids. You would think, my God, how cruel can you be to a child? It just breaks my heart because it's, 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 it's happening very much so in the so-called body of Christ. See, I'm not concerned with the world in the sense of what they do. Sinners are sinners. I'm not called to deal with them as far as uh, my reprimand and rebuke for them. The scripture calls us to judge at home first, to deal with the folks in the church of the household of faith. And what grieves me is that there are many mothers in the faith who don't care about their children. They have no mm-hmm. love for them. They are kicking them to the side. They leave them out for the world to teach them and the harsh elements. And this is what the ostrich does. But the only excuse the ostrich has is that God made her that way. God says that he did not give the ostrich wisdom. He deprived her from understanding. So really the ostrich has an excuse as to why she does what she does. But what gets me upset are the people who are in the household of faith speaking in somebody's tongue, going to somebody's Bible study, and don't show love to their children when wisdom is given out every Wednesday, every Sunday morning, and beyond when the preacher is preaching, the word of God is there for us to learn and to grow from. What's our excuse, ladies? So, yes, today I'm getting on the mothers who call themselves Christian mothers raising children that are being raised and left all to themselves. I ain't got no help all by myself in my house here today. But lo and behold, I tell you the truth, it grieves the heart of God that one would go on living life this way and not lean upon the Father and seek for his wisdom, seek for his understanding. Oh, we get understanding about everything. I know so many mothers that understand how to sign a CA-7 form, how to make sure they get more money on the food stamps, but do not know about the GPA of their children, do not know about how to get their kid into college, but they know all the ins and outs about the things that they love and that they care for, but yet they fail to love that child and to be concerned with their welfare. Don't you see the striking comparison? So nowadays, you know, uh, uh, I really say happy Mother's Day to mothers. But if you're a mother in the body of Christ that neglects your children and you don't seek for their welfare, you don't circumspectly prepare them for the world, my friend, you are an ostrich. And you're worse than the ostrich because the ostrich has an excuse. God made her that way. My mother, my, my, my wife, my, my wife, my mother's sister, my mother's sister, who has gone on now, and I don't know where she went. I hope that she's with the Lord in her deathbed. She had a deathbed confession. She had, I have today living, four uh, uh, cousins who are my first cousins. And my auntie, my auntie, Uh, raised them, and it is a saying amongst our family that my auntie was the brains of the family. She did everything for them. And if you do everything for your kids and don't leave them to be responsible, you're hurting them because you're handicapping them. Oh, I learned this the hard way with my grandmother Annie. my, My grandmother Annie, there were times as a man, a young man, I should have suffered She should not have let me borrow money to get out of this or that and to get this and that. But she, in her love, her love was so strong, it actually hurt me because it robbed me from learning about life. 
It robbed me from learning about reality. It robbed me from learning how to become a man, a man. And I was telling my wife recently that, you know, when I was a younger man, when I was 18 years old with a baby on the way, I didn't have as much fear as I do now. See, I'm, 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 I'm 35 now, and I've got more than one kid. And I'm, I'm stressing out about that, not that I am worried that God won't provide. No, but I have more concern. When I was younger, I didn't really know what life was about. I didn't know that I had to make sure things were in place. Not because I had such great faith. I have great faith now, but there's a reality that comes with faith that I must be a man that is going to provide for my family. And I told my wife, you know, my grandmother, she shouldn't have helped me out as much as she did. She should not have done those things because I learned the hard way. Well, anyway, back to my, my aunt. When my aunt passed away, um, my, four, my four cousins today seemingly do not know how to go about doing the most mundane things of this life as to prepare proper meals, as to make sure certain things are circumspectly done away with, with bills and life and how to socialize. My auntie robbed my cousins from being independent of her. They were so dependent on what she would plan, on what she would do, and how she would make a way that they themselves today without her cannot function completely because of their dependence on her for so many years. Do you follow what I'm telling you? Oh, what's yeah. true? It happens all the time when we want to, again, alleviate our children from pain. But God doesn't do that. No, he doesn't. He allows us to cry. He allows us to suffer. He allows us to go through. And we think, well, Lord, you don't love me. Oh, no, yes, love will take you through something, my friend, because God knows it's needful for you to experience the heartache and the pain, to build character in you. Amen, somebody. This Amen. woman, or rather this animal here, this ostrich, is, is truly someone that I can see, or this ostrich, if you will, if I use it for, in, a, in, a, in a spiritualistic type of sense, an allegorical sense, is, is quite rampant in the body of Christ today. Mothers that kick their children to the side. Oh, my friend, I have met so many young women. The moment they find a new plaything, a new boy toy, what do they do? Well, they kick their children to the side. You know, a single mother is always trying to get somebody to watch their kids so they can go find their life. God help us. Oh, I got a kid with this man, so can you watch this kid? I'm not going to watch somebody's kid so you can go out and fornicate, so you can go out and make more babies, so you can go out and find yourself in more sin. No, thank you. There are many women who will put their children to the side to get what they want, to get that man, to get all the things that are, are, are seemingly, yes, important, but by means of which they, just, they, 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 they fail to do their first work. We are obligated, number one, to take care of our family. And I'm not saying a woman cannot date. Don't I misunderstand me. What I'm trying to tell you is that women's motives are wrong today because they treat their children like nothing. I've met so many women who look at their children as if they are burdens, that they're hmm. burdens. And you can tell that they're not wanted, maybe because they weren't with the right kind of man or maybe because they can barely afford to take care of them. Hey, no, 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 that's a blessing. And unless you get with God and know who he is and seek his wisdom, you will never see the value of what you have there to have a child as a blessing. And I met, again, so many mothers who think that the children are slowing them down, that they can't live their life. And that's why when the child gets 17, 18 years old, the mother and mother gets happier and happier. So that way they can go ahead and get that child to the side so they can live their life all over again. Mm. And this is a mother of God? And these are people in the church? I'm going to remind you, this ostrich has an excuse. She doesn't have wisdom. She doesn't have understanding. But... I think somewhere in the Bible it tells us of all that getting, get an understanding. We're human beings created in God's image, although yet fallen. But if we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and God has come inside of our heart to do a work in us unto sanctification, shall we not strive for the mastery? Shall we not strive for the prize? Shall we not strive to be better parents, to be better mothers? And, yes, I'll be getting on the fathers when Father's Day comes around. 
But let's camp out with the mothers. How horrible it is for a mother to have children where she handicaps them. You know, the world we live in today, it's so easy to give a child a tablet, so easy to give a child a video game, so easy to give a child cable TV. Now, what is a video game? What is cable TV? What is a tablet? All of those things are doing what the mother doesn't want to do, babysit her own children. These are ways to say, get out of my face, go on into your room, play your video game, and let me give you all the games that you want, all the tablet and the carnal TV shows that you want. So what? You can stay out of my hair, and then we wonder why they don't want to do chores. Then we wonder why they can't get a job. Then we wonder why they can't go and function in society. That child will grow up and be with you for 20 and 30 years. My friend, it's happening today in Japan. What do you mean, Kasefi Mungia? Well, in Japan, there is a condition of solitary confinement that people uh, induce upon themselves, where you find grown men who sit and make money in their own little house, and with the money they make, they don't go nowhere. They don't go out and buy a woman. They don't go out and buy the finer things in life or a Mercedes Benz. They are secluded to their house. And my God, guess what they're doing? They're playing video games all day long. And these people are so uh, recluse in their little apartment that when they do go out to society, they have a service now in Japan where if you want someone to be your friend, you can pay them $25 an hour American money to come and pretend to be your friend, to pretend to be someone that you know so that you don't look to the outside world as someone who is a loner. Isn't that the most craziest thing? Rather than what we used to do as children to go out to the local arcade or to the hamburger center and say, hey, what's up? Let's play, let's play some, some rocks and uh, I mean, shoot some dice or some marbles or whatever the case. Let's go. And, uh, uh, and we, we made friends. But now people don't even make friends outside of the video game. Why is that? They didn't have mothers or fathers, likewise, who pushed them to interact, to socialize. They were, if you will, kicked to the side. I tell you the most grievous thing for me when I reflect on days like this is that there's some people who should not be honored as mothers at all when they consider how they have kicked their children to the side, how they have left them to be by themselves and to fend for themselves. I know a lady who gets X amount of dollars for the sake of her child who is an adopted child but does not do that which is righteous in the eyes of God nor the state as to provide for that child a decent means of food every day. Mm. What do you mean, Concepcion? Well, the food that she does buy for the child can be bought at the local 99-cent store, and it's not enough to last one whole week. The child is left to find a way to stretch it out for one whole week, and there that child asks a little bit more. Oh, my God, that's someone kicking their child to the side. That's not a mother. That's a tyrant. That's, that's the woman uh, who uh, was a Cinderella had to deal with, that, that wicked stepmother who had those other two daughters, and she was giving Cinderella all kinds of issues, wasn't she? A wicked woman. That's not a mother. But there's some people in the world who are so deluded who think, well, as long as you got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, and something in there to eat, that's a mother. If we sum up that as a mother only, a roof over your head, food on the table, and clothes on your back, then the local prison is a mother too. No, being a mother is far more than just providing clothes. Being a mother is far more than just providing a hot meal. Being a mother it's far more than just providing a roof over that child's head. It's about instructing that child in, a, in the things of God, in the things of life, preparing them, telling them, get your nasty, stinking tail in that bathtub and clean your body. Go in there and do those chores. Go in there and get the homework done. Go in there and bring back good grades. Be in the house at a certain time. If we don't change this mothers that are listening, what will we produce? But more mothers on the same downward spiral headed to hell where children do not want to be uh, obey anybody. They won't, they won't obey the teacher. They won't obey the policeman. They won't obey God. 
Why? Because you as a mother, as a father, are called to instruct them in the things of God. And if you're not doing that, all you are is an ostrich. And you're worse than an ostrich. Oh, it's true. There is one day that is coming we all will be shamed of, and I, I, I can't escape from it myself. The day that when God tries our ministry, well, you think, I'm not a pastor. I, I, I'm not an evangelist. I, I'm not a prophet. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a preacher. My friend, your first ministry was to the ministry God gave you to be a mother. If you're a mother, be one. If you're going to do it, do it all the way. Don't do it halfway, y'all. If you're going to be a mother, be a mother. So many mothers today are trying to be the child's friend. So many mothers today are trying to be on the child's level. No, that's wrong. God help us today. So many mothers are on their way to hell sending the children to hell because they fail to show them the way. To be a godly mother, one that is recognized of God, the scripture tells us there was a woman by the name of Abigail who, of course, married uh, she was to marry, uh, the Lord would make it up that he would marry uh, her. Uh, his name was David. The Bible says she was a woman of good understanding. I'm going to say it again. It says Abigail was a woman of good understanding. Oh, give me a mother that has good understanding, a mother that won't push you off to the side, but that will seek and to strive to find a way to help and to deal with you, that will lovingly correct you, that will be there in the hardship and in the pain. Oh, God, it should not be that mothers look forward to when their child is grown. No, your child will always, when they're 30 years old, believe me, I know. When they're 35 years old, believe me, I've seen it. When they're 40 years old, your children will always be your children if they live in your house or not. They will need you. Yeah. So many mothers now, again, look so forward to getting them out of the house. You're wrong. You're wrong. If you put them out of the house and they're not prepared, how far will they go? How far mm. will they get if they have not the instruction of righteousness, if they have not the integrity of God's word, if they have not seen God working in you, what more than of them? Why would they want what you have if you've done them the way you've done them? Why would they want the Jesus you claim to serve if he ain't got on you? Well, today God is getting on the mothers worse than an ostrich because we show ourselves to be hypocrites when we claim that God changes lives and yet there's no change in your family. And yet there is no change in your heart towards your children. Oh, God, there's coming a day. He said he would turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons and the sons back to the fathers. Likewise, for the mothers back to the daughters and the daughters to the, to, to the mothers. There needs to be a unification. It will never happen until we get first back with God. Don't tell me that you are involved with God and you're not involved and actively involved with your children. Hmm. Doesn't that be worse for you than the woman who doesn't have a child at all? Because she may do more righteousness by that child than you who have been blessed to birth kids. Oh, my dear friend, how true it is today. Mothers who call themselves mothers, but they're really ostriches. They're worse than an ostrich. Because, again, the scripture says the ostrich, the ostrich, God didn't make the ostrich to have wisdom. He didn't give her understanding. I know one mother who, who sees her child once every blue moon. The child has lived with one particular uh, relative for X amount of months and then this other relative and leave it to this mother. She's a good mother. God, help us today that someone could be so foolish to think that she's a good mother and the child doesn't even see you. The person who takes the child to school is not the biological mother but a sister, an auntie, the person that combs the child's hair, that prepares the food, that tells them to go brush your teeth and to say your prayers is not the biological mother. But the biological mother has the audacity to say, I'm a good mother. Well, I haven't got a chance to confront her yet with her sin. But if I don't, the Lord will. Do you recognize how chagrined we all will be when the Lord would tell us to our face what a horrible parent we were? We don't like to hear that kind of stuff by God, but it's the truth. 
He's a God of truth, and he will not use words that are so politically correct as to, as to uh, ease us into a rebuke. No, he is straightforward. And I would rather receive truth now than to be shamed up there with God in heaven. Amen. And that dear lady, I pray the Lord open up her eyes, and he opened up her ears to let her see how horrible of a parent she is, how horrible of a mother she is, how worse than an ostrich she is, because here's someone who could get understanding. The scripture says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to every man liberally and who will not withhold it. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you knowledge. He wants to give you understanding. He wants to give you love, but we don't want it for the things that really matter. This mother pursues her own vain life of sin as to supposedly one day make a good life for the child. Well, she's losing valuable time in the meantime. Oh, it's true, everybody. I've met so many people say, well, i, I got to get a better life for, for my children. So what I'll do is you watch my child for me while I go and establish my life. I've never found in the Bible that you have to leave your first responsibility to go and build your life. No. You're supposed to take upon that which God has given you to whom much is given, what is required, and make it work. I'm not saying, yes, we can't ask for help, but God forbid we shove and push off responsibility to someone else. How many grandmothers do you know right now today that are watching their grandchildren, that are watching their children's children when the children's children are doing everything but serve God, everything but do the right thing? Huh? Mm. And it leaves the burden of raising the child to the grandmother. And it causes the grandmother to stress and to strain. That's not the grandmother's responsibility. Mm. It's the mother's job. And yes, my friend, that doesn't mean the grandmother can't help raise the child, but it's not the grandmother's responsibility. But we claim to be good mothers. Mm. Oh, it's sad, isn't it? I would have to that it is. It's grievous. But there's coming a day of reckoning. There's coming a day that the Lord himself will have to go and weigh the hearts of many. When I read about this ostrich and how she leaves the children out in the open, not caring if they will be trampled under. I, I would hate to see it, you know what I mean? I, and I've, seen, I've seen mothers who don't care about how the children smell. And I know how it was when I was growing up. I was a very nasty little boy when it came to talking about folks. If they were big and fat, believe me, I had my chance of talking about fat folks, especially if they smelled, especially if their clothes were ragged. Now, if you've been there, you understand that why in the world would a mother, knowing how cruel kids can be, why would a mother put her kids in a school system that way, that way they will likewise be talked about? They're allowing their children to be trampled under. But, see, the ostrich again, the ostrich has an excuse. The mothers that do this, they don't have an excuse. Don't tell me you can't buy soap and you buy everything else you want to buy. Don't tell me you got cable TV, you can't buy deodorant. You got cable TV, you can't buy a bar of soap. Something wrong with that. The reason why is that they're worse than an ostrich because they lack wisdom. They lack understanding. And there, the ostrich doesn't have sense to ask for wisdom, doesn't have sense to ask for knowledge, doesn't have sense to ask for understanding. But you, supposed to be Christian, you're supposed to have some sense. Why would you let your kids be talked about? Why would you let people trample them and despise them and, and not want to be around them? And you know how it was when you grew up. You knew. I'm sure all of us listening around the world know how it is to be in school and not to have the latest clothes on or not to have been up to par in your hygiene or bad breath and somebody made fun of you. Mm-hmm. When a mother does not take the time to circumspectly pre-adventure perceive how the world will receive their children and make preparations, make, make adequate uh, arrangements to protect that child, you're worse, you're worse, you're worse than an ostrich. You're worse than an ostrich. An ostrich has got, he, he has more accountability to be, to be off the judgment of God than you because the ostrich doesn't know 
to do better. But you, you as a Christian believer who go to church and do the church thing and pay your tithe and believe in God are worse than a mother, worse than a ostrich mother. It grieves me when I read these passages. It grieves me when I see that it says here, let me see here, uh, she forgets uh, that a foot may crush them, how absent-minded she is, of course, or that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly as if they were not her own. Lord, have mercy, Jesus, isn't it true? That people have kids and they treat them so very bad. Oh, they cuss them out. They talk to them mean. They shut them down. I, I was looking at my son recently, and I was looking at how in our relationship, how much love that our family has. And this, again, is not putting me on the pedestal because I fall and I am weak like everybody else on the line here. But I was noticing how my wife, how she has a relationship with my little girls, how they are, it's a custom for them now to say that they, that they have love for each other. Mommy, I love you. Um, and Shiloh, uh, I love you. They know how to interact and to love each other. And when my little girl comes to her with something exciting, my, my wife is excited about embracing with a little scratch. Uh, it's like a, a stick figure of her and us and all that together. My wife says, oh, how beautiful. But there's some mothers that are so caught up in their own life and the child does their best to make a stick figure or something on a piece of paper, and they bring it to the, to the mama, and the mama's like, get away, man. I, I, I don't want to see you right now. Leave me alone. Some of you listening today may have done uh, in your life, uh, you, you, you made something for your mother, and she did not really see or value or appreciate what you did for her. She was too busy, caught up chasing a man or chasing money or chasing life or doing whatever it was. And it crushed your heart. It called for you not to be as loving. It called for you not to be as caring. You felt alone. How we shut down our children from growing when we don't show them love, when we don't show them affection, when we don't show them that, yes, what they say matters. Preach that. If you do that, you're worse than an ostrich. Because an ostrich, again, doesn't know no better. Oh, God, help us today. The scripture says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Oh, my friends, we are producing a generation today of more destructive children because we did not know any better, because not that the word of God wasn't there. We were too lazy to pick up the word of God and read it. Too lazy to go labor and seek God for direction of how to handle our children. Oh, God, that's the way of the modern age. That's the way that people do things today. The ostrich is not the most glamorous of birds, as I read in the beginning there, not the most, if you will, aesthetically beautiful bird, but its character traits, its, its ways reveal its nature. It is in the nature of the bird to do what it does. Well, my friend, you who are a Christian, your nature is supposed to be changed. Your nature is supposed to be that of godliness and righteousness, of truth and honor, of love and dignity, of those things pertaining to the fruits of the Spirit. Your nature is supposed to be that striving for the mastery, striving for the righteous things of God, seeking ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And yet we do everything but that. We show ourselves to be still unregenerate when we carry on the same old kind of way. I think about, again, several mothers that I know, several people, some of them I may know personally, I suppose, to some degree, former people that were a part of our church at one time, and how they would do their children, how they would do their kids so very wrong, so very wicked. They'll learn, they say, they'll learn. How will they learn unless they be a teacher? Life don't teach you nothing. That's yes. it, life, we're not left to ourselves to fend for ourselves. That's why God gave us parents, y'all. Adam's parent was God himself. Adam was to teach his sons. Adam was to teach his sons and daughters. They weren't left to be in this world by themselves. If your children today have more regard for their friends than you, you have failed to be a mother. If your children today 
have more joy and get more wisdom out of being around their friends than you, you have failed to be a mother. My dear friends, there's a failure of being a true mother in the body of Christ today. And that's what we have to deal with this morning or rather this evening. How can we get back to the ways of God? We've got to get back to the book here. Get back to saying, Lord, who am I? How am I? Where am I? What shall I do? What can I do to please you? Are there things happening right under my nose and I don't see it? Are there things happening that I'm allowing to develop and I have failed to really discern being so caught up with my, well, let me say this also, what do, what do ostriches do, y'all, that we often see on television? They bury their head in the sand. They bury their head in the dirt. They bury their head underground. I don't know why they do this. I forgot to even study about that. But listen here. Are we turning a deaf ear and a blind eye to what should be obvious? Are we yes. failing to circumspectly see what will happen? That's the problem. People are not having discernment. They don't walk in the mall. There was a time when little kids would, 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 would do certain things. And so I said, oh, we've got to watch out here. This, this kid may be homosexual one day. So what will the church do then? They would get together and they would pray for the kid. We're going to pray that this homosexual spirit will not manifest in this child's life. <laughs> I was watching a, a, a preacher, and I really despise how this woman does. A little boy who had been raised in the church, now he is uh, preaching. And he's, he has so many and so much effeminate ways. He's preaching just like the pastor of the church who was a woman. And the way he holds his hands and how he screams, I said, he's acting just like her. I, I am my, I'm, I'm willing to wager $100,000 that, 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 that 9.9 .9 out of 10, this young man will one day manifest as a homosexual because they're allowing him to speak like a woman, to walk around, even though he has a suit on, even though he has pants on, his hair cut is like a man, his ways are bleeding through as though he will be homosexual. Mm. But what has the pastor done? Buried her head in the offering. Because when he preaches, they get a lot of money. God help us today because he prophesied. God helps us today. I will not bury my head in the, in the offering basket and turn a deaf mm. ear and a blind eye to what people are doing? So today, Pastor. No. I have to be better than an ostrich. And let me ask you this now. From now on, when you see a low-down, disgusting, so-called specimen of a mother, I dare you to call her an ostrich. But say, no, mm. baby, if I called you an ostrich, that would be a compliment. Oh, glory to God. See, it, it would be better that you were an ostrich because you would have an excuse. I keep going back to this, y'all. If you were an ostrich, you would have an excuse because the ostrich was made with no wisdom, with no understanding, with no knowledge. But you, who claim to be in Jesus Christ, who claim to be a servant of God, are worse than that ostrich. Because you now claim that God lives on the inside of you and you still don't know what to do. And that's the plight that is before us today. Mothers who are worse than ostriches, who are worse than the mother that kicks the babies to the side, that leaves them open in the bear, that does not fend for them, that does not nurture them, that does not care for them. Oh, yes, it's happening worse with human beings. Mothers that don't feed their children, that they're not concerned with their grades, not concerned with their health, not concerned. If anything, that a mother, if the mother is carnal, let me tell you what the mother will be concerned with. A check. A check. I've seen so many young ladies over the years that are more concerned with making sure their child is in the schooling programs as to get more money for the check they get every month for them. In fact, just recently, some time ago, someone told me that uh, uh, one child uh, was actually now out of a certain program, and the, and the school called the mother and said, hey, uh, your child has gotten better. 
They no longer need to be in, 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 on the yellow bus. They no, they, they no longer need to be in special ed. Thank you, Jesus, we think she would say. Yeah. You would think she would say, thank you, Father, that my child no longer is handicapped. They're no longer going to be in special ed. But the mother turned around and said, no, keep my child in the handicapped special ed so I can get my check. God Almighty today, God Almighty today, when a mother says, I don't want my child to be healed, I want that check that keeps my cable on, that keeps food in my refrigerator, keep my child in the handicapped special ed class. Mm, mm. Now, do you not know that's an insult to God? That people now want, I guess, do they want handicapped children? Do, Do they want slow children? Do they want kids to forever be uh, uh, in a state of dependency? That broke my heart. When yeah. it comes to getting checks, the carnal mother is revealed because she says, if by any means necessary, if I can get my check or uh, get my child to go through a clinical trial, or if I can use them and use them here and use them there and let you borrow them for this and that, if, I, if by any ways I can get more money for me, it's all right. The only thing I'm concerned about is me. And I'll use whatever county money for me. I'll use whatever Social Security money for me. You will suffer in there. Again, I think one of the worst things for me as I look at the body of Christ are those who are of that sort. And especially likewise <clears throat> for those and who go and get foster kids, foster kids, foster kids. I knew a lady who, of course, in her mind she was saving money. She was saving money. So she would take the foster kids she got and she would make them wear clothes, from the secondhand store. Don't get me wrong. Thank you, Jesus, for some goodwill and some Salvation Army. But that lady was wicked because all the money she saved, she didn't invest in those kids. She invested in her own life. She made sure she had a savings account, not for the welfare of those kids, but for her own life. Today, that woman is blind as a bat. And you would think because she took so many foster kids in and and, and helped them that they would come back and say, thank you. No, they don't want nothing to do with that woman because she played as though she was a Christian woman and was the biggest gossiper, the biggest liar, the biggest hypocrite in the church. And they watched her take all the money the state was giving to them for them. And she took that money and put it in her own pocket, bought herself cars, bought herself rings, bought herself all the stuff to make her house look good. And those kids slept on cops. And none of those kids today have nothing to do with her. Hmm. And she's blind as a bat today. And no one helps her. Someone once well said she's reaping what she sows. Oh, not fully yet. Because if she doesn't repent, if she doesn't get it right with God, she'll Hmm. be in hell blind as a bat. She'll be in hell there suffering behind what she did to the little ones. God told us, be careful how you treat children. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says it would be better that a millstone be around your neck than you to offend one of these little ones. That's what his word says, y'all. Jesus said, stop all the little children to come unto me. Glory to God. All oh, the most precious gifts, one of the most precious gifts that we have are our children. And we slap God in the face but not doing them right. We slap God in the face but not loving them with all of our heart to prepare a better life than we had. But we say what? Let life teach them. Oh, yeah, God going to teach you. He'll teach you real good. He's going to fix these rotten mothers. He's going to fix yeah. these rotten parents. He's going to come with a day of vengeance. As the scripture says, his eyes look like unto a flame of fire. Why fire? Because God was mad. He's mad. He's angry and grieved at people in his body, in his church, falling down and praying and speaking in tongues and doing all these things, but can't do none of it at home. Mm. And mothers, mothers today are in for a rude awakening. Now, I tell you today, the Lord is grieved with those who claim to be 
genuine mothers and fall very woefully, inadequately short of what that word means, of what the title means, of what prestige and honor it is to bestow a godly woman who feareth the Lord. Beauty is vain, the scripture tells us, that we ought to be known for those characteristics that, for the women, to be known for those characteristics that, 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 that protrude out of a heart that is righteous, that is seen where the scripture says over them Proverbs, the children rise up and call her blessed. Oh, yes, hmm. that's the Proverbs 31 woman, y'all. It says her children rise up and call her blessed. But let me ask you a question, my dear friend. If your children were, were, were arrested and, and they, were, they were taken down and they were, they were put into an interrogating room, in an interrogation room, would they say you were blessed? What would they say about you? Mm. What would they say about you? My friend, you ain't got to wait for them to be interrogated. You need to go mm. ask your children today, what do you say about me? Am I blessed or am I playing blessed? Am I a hypocrite? Am I, what am I to you? See, when your children can rise up and see you for who you are, and if ever you want to get the truth about somebody, go to your children, y'all. Go to your children. They're unbiased. They'll tell you. Yeah. That's how they feel. If you let them, if you let them speak without any fear that you would whoop them in return. Hmm. Some kids will lie to you because they're afraid of you. But no, may it be that when you are in the city, wherever you may be, and someone asks you, "Are they what? 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 The, what, the, what does your children? What do your children say about you?" Hmm. My friend, that's a very important. You see, we the the, the 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 mothers like this, they want to be known to the preacher that they're a great woman of God. They want to be known to the men they're trying to get with that they got a clean house. But what do the children say? The children hmm. probably say, well, this, mom, uh, the children probably say, sir, my mama doesn't clean up this house every day. She only cleaned this house up so you can come home and sleep with her tonight. Other than that, we <laughs> stay here. We're always dirty. We're always hungry. Will you be our daddy? And that man will get in that car and hit 90 miles an hour in five seconds. Huh. Preach on today, Pastor. Friend, we've got to get back to being true mothers. This is your radio pastor, Concepcion Munguia, uh, giving you in context here, Job 39, verses 13 through 18. And I pray that you will take this message. I hope my mother will stop the recording in a few minutes here when I'm off, and we'll lock this recording in. I, I want everyone under the sound of my voice to request a copy. And Amen. I want you to send it to somebody you know. I, I, and I will make sure that we get a hard copy if you can download it. That way you can get the hard copy and make your own copy. And send it yes. to everybody you know that you believe or suspect you believe that they are worse than an ostrich. Mm. I want Lord. the body of Christ to hear this message today. May the Lord bless you. Until next week. Take it away, Mom. Amen. God bless you. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. We had several, several, my God, we had just an, an overflow of, of e, uh, chatting to come in to say that, that the message today hit them so foundly, hit them, hit home. We have a young man here, praise God, that says, my Lord, my Lord, I know this is nothing but the true living God speaking through this uh, young man here. I've never met this young man, but I've heard so much about this young man, praise God. Uh, but he says, this is my wife, glory to God, glory to God. Uh, he has yeah. left uh, his e email yeah, information and things of this nature. Uh, but it is just so many here that are just coming in, I mean, just left and right, that are saying, this is me today. And ostrich, the Lord. this is me today. This is me today, and ostrich, and how I have worse than an ostrich. Worse than an ostrich. They worse yes. than an ostrich. And, yes. and ostrich have have more grace than they do. My mind. They're worse than an ostrich. Mom, make sure you stop the record button before you yes. hang up, because yes. it, it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't record it if you didn't. You have to stop the record before you hang up, please. Yes, 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 yes.
Okay. Uh, but praise God, I want to thank each and every one of you that have written in. Praise God, I want to thank each and every one of you that were on the line today as I made it the very, yeah. very top of the broadcast. Yeah. That this would be a powerful pack message, a powerful yeah. pack Mother Day yeah. message. And it was today. Uh, things got me trickling inside, you know, make me have to go back and examine my heart and go back to my children and ask them, who am I? Uh, glory to God. And so this was a very, very, very tedious hit home message today. Praise God. And as Dr. Yeah. Conception has said, for those, I pray that you send this to those, praise God, that you know of someone uh, as he spoke on today, glory to God. This was nothing but the Lord. Uh, people are still writing in saying this is nothing but the Lord. Nothing but the Lord. Nothing but the Lord. And they just graciously thank God for the message on today. Uh, one lady is saying here, praise God. She says, my God, I went to Sunday service, praise God. And she says, this has topped my pastor. Glory to God. This has topped my pastor because I wish my pastor was on fire like your pastor, Mother Smith, she says, because this is today. This is today. She makes mention that she knows of several young ladies is worse than an ostrich, praise God. She says she was just this morning on her face and knees praying for her granddaughter, glory to God, to being the mother that she needs to be and to standing up, standing up and giving what thus says the Lord, giving back unto the children, glory to God, because the children did not ask to be here, she says. She says the children did not ask to be here, but they are a gift from God, she says, praise God. And so, once again, this is your radio announcer, Mother Smith. You have been listening to our pastor, Dr. Conception Mungia, who is here every Sunday evening, praise God, at 3 o'clock p.m. If you would like any more further details on the ministry, praise God, and even just to meeting and greeting uh, Dr. Conception personally in the Riverside community, you must email him at thecanonuniversity at gmail.com. Praise God. And so, once again, please tune in and on next Sunday at 3 o'clock p.m. Praise God. Dr. Conception will be returning. Praise God. And we are here for those that already know that uh, I see some of you, you know when we're here. Praise God. So I won't just keep double talking, double talking. But uh, I pray that the message uh, touched home for many of you. And I pray that you do share the link with someone. Praise God. And we want to thank Dr. Conception Mungia. Praise God for coming and teaching and preaching and letting us know about the ostrich and the difference in it, praise God, and how so many have wronged their children because, again, saints of God, children did not ask to be here, and they are a gift. And as he made mention in today's sermon, if you are doing of these things, you need to go back and ask the Lord to examine your heart because there is so true that there are mothers that should not be mothers, but who are we to judge those? But when you got a preacher like this, glory to God, Teaching the word, glory to God. He got to tell yeah. it like it is, glory to God. He yeah. must tell it as the Lord gives it unto him, glory to God. And we pray the same for you all this day. And I won't go on, glory to God. I'm on fire with this message. It's, I mean, the, the, the chats is just coming in. I'm going to have to let this line go and answer these uh, right. people here, praise God. But again, I want to thank Dr. Conception Mungia for that powerful Mother's Day uh, sermon today, praise God. Uh, Pastor Sky, I want to thank you for being on the line, and so other many that are on the line here with us today, and so many are just emailing us just like, my God, my God. Uh, with Bless no your heart. Well, they're welcome, to get all the, they're welcome to get all of it on tape. Amen. Mama, make sure you, uh, before you close out right now, go ahead and stop the recording so we can yes. keep it on, because it, I, I don't have my machine working here. So okay. make sure it's stop the okay. recording so it, it will stop recording and we have that link. Locked in yes, there. sir. Yes, sir. So, thanks of God. Thank you. Uh, until next Sunday, this is your radio announcer, Mother Smith, signing off. God bless you all. Amen.